Hi everyone. So after four and a half months in beautiful Columbia, South America, I'm back in beautiful British Columbia here in Canada on Vancouver Island. And today we're going to go on an adventure. We're going to go to a place called Mary Vine Falls out towards the little town of Souk, which is on the southwest tip of Vancouver Island. Now while I'm out there, I'm going to do my best to give you some photography tips. And over the course of the next few months, I'm going to take you to some of my most favorite spots on Vancouver Island. Alright, so when I do that, my little rule is I'm only going to play Canadian music in this vehicle here. And so I thought what better band to start off with than the classic Canadian house band, The Tragically Hip. And so, I want to dedicate this to the late Gord Downey, the one and only unique performer who was the lead singer of the uh, Tragically Hip, who died of cancer last year. And so, this is to him and all you Canadians out there that love the Canadian band, the Tragically Hip. All right, so let's get things started. Let's get rolling. today a little bit overcast but that's all right that's actually good for waterfall photography still fairly uh, light skies so we'll see what happens out there it's going to take me about uh, 35 minutes to drive here there from victoria and it'll be a good day taking the scenic route to get to Souk. I think it's actually a little bit quicker, but either way, less traffic, more scenic. This route here actually goes by uh, East Souk Park. If you haven't been to East Street Park, it's a beautiful little spot with a, a couple little nice sandy beaches and some rocky outcrops. So uh, I'm on the path now to Mary Vine Falls and it's uh, about another eight minute walk. And it's actually uh, pouring rain right now but uh, the sky is still pretty bright. It's not dark and gloomy so that's a, it's almost perfect conditions for shooting waterfalls. 
Uh, I guess the bright side of the fact that it's pouring rain would be that uh, uh, hold on I'll think of something oh I remember now bright side of it pouring rain is that nobody else is stupid enough to come out here when it's raining so I'm gonna have the whole place to myself that's always good but in all seriousness the good thing about it raining is that I know there's a lot of uh, just gotta go under this little tree here there's a lot of uh, moss as you can see it's pretty mossy out in this area and so that means that the uh, the colors are going to be a popping and so that's great a little bit of a creek this is uh, the creek that comes down from Pedden Lake which feeds Mary Lion Falls and so uh, my prediction is that the water level of the falls is going to be pretty much perfect Hey, how's it going? Don't mind me, this is just one of those obligatory, I'm walking along the trail shots that seem to be the thing to do, so you didn't see me. Alright, I'm here. I hope you can hear me. So are you ready to get your first glimpse of Mary Vine Falls? Yeah? Alright. So, behold. So in actuality, uh, the, the falls aren't quite as full as I was hoping. They're a little bit weak on the left hand side there. But uh, still pretty good. I'm not going to complain. It's uh, I've seen it a little bit better, but this is still really good. Gives you the idea of how beautiful the spot is. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set up, and then I'll tell you some of my thoughts behind my composition, and then we'll go from there. So one last thing before I set up my camera and tripod. I'm a bit of a stickler for scouring the scene and looking for particularly bare branches, which I'll show you what I mean in a moment, but I'm actually going to go around and look at the rocks and I'm going to look for, you know, like even this twig here, it's bare and so it's going to show up in the photo. Now you can clean that up in Photoshop, but why not take a few minutes and go around and clean up this kind of stuff like this is the kind of stuff if this is in your photo this is really going to show up and it's going to be a distraction in your photo so as you can see a lot of people have already thrown a lot of dead branches and i can also see that some people have uh, broken a few branches off which is uh i don't think is uh that's a good thing, but anyhow, I'm going to climb up here. I'm going to clean this up here a little bit. I'm not going to go totally crazy, but well, maybe a little crazy, but but yeah, you can see these branches here. All that stuff to me, it'll just improve the photo. Just looking around here, that stuff will over there. That'll be out of my frame. I've already done a little bit of cleanup in this area over here. But still, there's, that might not be in the photo at all, but again, it doesn't have to be there. It's going to get tossed off to the side. So, I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, the one thing I don't like here, though, is that somebody has built a little bit of a, a rock bridge. 
so that they can get across and that's uh, that's actually blocking the flow of water and it just doesn't look natural because it isn't somebody put all these rocks here anyway I'm not going to uh, start moving a bunch of heavy rocks around so I'll just have to leave it as it is and so as you can see this is a little bit further down the river so there's really about I'd say about three really good compositions that can be had at this spot and uh, over the next half an hour hour I'll show you what I think they are so I think I'm ready to get yeah I'm ready to get set up so let's get to it okay so I think that I've got my first composition set up and unfortunately I've been having troubles with my LCD screen LCD screen so uh, it might go off at any moment but anyway I'll tell you the method behind the madness here I've got the main waterfall right in the middle of the frame and then I've got as you can see here this little cascade running right off into the corner and the trees off to the sides are fairly well balanced We've got trees on both sides uh, nice green on each side the bonus of today is it's not windy so I don't have to worry about doing uh, quick exposures just to compensate for that but um, I'll show you what I got once I get home and once I've done my post processing but I think this shot will be okay now the one thing you'll notice might not be obvious on here so let me just show you the actual waterfall but the upper falls is getting a lot more light and so it's noticeably brighter than this lower cascade here so and this has happened every time I've come to this waterfall what I've done is I've taken three different exposures one to make sure that that upper bright area is properly exposed then the next one to make sure that this lower cascade is properly exposed and then one more to make sure that I've got uh, all the surrounding forest area properly exposed but mainly the dark areas I wanted to make sure that I can bring out any details in post processing that I want to bring out so three different exposures that will definitely do the trick I, I have a feeling that two will be sufficient but better to err on the side of caution and take too many exposures than not enough Okay, so let me share a little bit about the settings that I use and some other things to get the shot that I'll be showing you later. First of all, because it's wet, those rocks are really shiny, so I'm using a polarizer. Now, get the, uh, the, the water shots, the upper and the lower cascades. I just set it at F22, aperture F22 and ISO 100 because want and I use a, a three stop ND filter and the reason why is simple I like the look of the slower motion to this kind of waterfall the last shot that I did for the surrounding scenery I noticed that the small thing as it is with this one branch here which is going to be you know, fairly significant over to the to the left in my photo, there is a little bit of motion. And so And so, as I was about to say until my camera stopped recording for some reason, I used F13 along with ISO 800 in order to make sure that I didn't have a blurry branch later on in my photo. All right, so let's have a look at the first photo. I'll tell you what I like about it 
and what I don't like about it. Although I actually like the lower cascade, I feel that it detracts from the main falls and it just makes the main falls look way too small. I also found that the branches on the left just don't match up with the beautiful green moss over on the right. Although it's an alright photo, definitely not my favorite from the day. So let's move on to the next. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this composition by doing a video. Uh, one of the problems I'm having is it's still raining. I'm trying to keep my camera dry, so I need to get a little special camera umbrella, I guess. But I don't want it to get any wetter than it already is. So, as you can see, I'm a lot closer. And, of course, I want to look at what are the advantages to being closer and what are the disadvantages and weigh the two when it comes to showing if I have have to show just one good shot which one would it be and why so as you'll see the thing I like about this shot I really like that big rock right there and I like the way the water comes down it kind of makes a little bit of an S curve right here so hopefully this the slow exposure will be coming more into the screen uh, the disadvantage I don't like is that there's tree on this side but no trees on this side not a big deal the good thing is that all the beautiful green moss is quite even on both sides so that's really good so those are the main things I can see off the top of my head my next decision is do I want to get a little bit lower get down a little bit further down here I'll try a couple different ones and see how how it works out at the different levels but you always want to try and get down nice and low and see if the water looks like it's coming right into the screen that could be a pretty cool look to your photo so i'm going to take a couple shots and i'll get back to you in a bit with this photo i feel like we're getting on the right track but i still think there's a couple weaknesses that overall i don't like i do like that the main waterfall is a lot more prominent but as I got my camera lower I found that that swath of white water in the lower third just wasn't giving me that it's coming into your camera look that I kind of was hoping for. Not only that but that whole lower third in the middle area is just a dark color and there's nothing that really popped out. There wasn't any colorful rocks in the water and there wasn't a reflection of the waterfall so it was just a lot of a, a, a dark color with nothing going on and to me that was the main weakness of this photo. Although I feel this photo was a step up from the last one, let's see if we can address the main weaknesses of this photo and get an even better composition this time. Alright so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this last shot that I took here. What I really like about it are these two little, well there's a third one here, but mainly this triangular shaped pool and that one there. And what I like about it is that it's nice and jagged, which matches with the jagged rocks and even the jaggedness, jaggedness of the waterfall itself. Plus there's a little bit of a reflection, which is a bonus. So, I haven't done this shot before, so we'll see how it turns out later. But, I think it might be a winner. I'll have a last look around, see if there's any other uh, unique compositions that I can find that I haven't done before. But, I think that's going to be uh, close to a wrap at this point. So, still drizzling out but again that's been pretty good because uh, the light is really nice and even and uh, yeah so I'm pretty happy with this condition a little bit wet I had to fumble with my umbrella but that's okay all part of the uh, part, part of the game hold on hold on just hold up for a moment 
sorry to interrupt, but I know that most of you aren't going to watch this video until the very end. And so I feel obligated, for your own good of course, to let you know that I have an ebook featuring 28 of Vancouver Island's best accessible waterfalls. Now when I say accessible, I mean that there's a trail to the waterfalls. You don't have to do any bushwhacking. So in the book, I mention the level of ease or difficulty for getting to the waterfalls. And if there's some confusing parts along the route, I've taken photos to help you identify where you need to make turns and so on. Also, I've mentioned how long it takes to get to the waterfalls at an average pace, of course. And as well as that, I've mentioned practical things like whether or not there's outhouses or bathrooms nearby. And if that isn't enough, I've also included several tips on how to get better waterfall photos. So if you're interested, all you have to do is go to the link down below and just look for where it says Amazon and Vancouver Island Waterfall eBook. Now, I can't remember the name of the guy who's making this video that you're just watching. Uh, I think it was Timothy or, no, it was Thomas. Sorry, I'm not very good with names, so I'm having a hard time remembering this guy's name, but this guy is new to the YouTube channel scene. So if you're enjoying his videos, please let him know by clicking on like and subscribe. And if you do, it'll help him to know that you want to make more videos. And he seems like a decent guy. <laughs> and he seems like a nice enough guy, so if you do help him out by clicking like and subscribe, I'm sure he'll make more videos for you. All right, back to this guy's video. I hope you enjoy it. Bye for now. Now we're really getting somewhere. The main waterfall is nicely proportioned in the photo. We have a nice foreground and the beautiful jagged mossy green rocks are nicely balanced on each side. So I think we've got a winner. But can we do better yet? Well, let's give it a try. So I was just mucking about. We're taking some video and trying different angles. And I came across this angle right here. And I actually really like it because uh, it's kind of got a, got a nice S shape to it. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's got these beautiful little baby ferns. A nice mossy glow over in that area there, so maybe this is a keeper too. If you can come away with two or three shots that you like from the location, that's a bonus. So again, we'll see how it looks when I do my post-processing, but I'm pretty optimistic about this shot. So this was the last photo of the day, and I have to be honest and say that this probably turned out to be my favorite. I'm not sure if it's because it's a fresh composition that I've never done before, or I don't think I've seen it before either, but I just like the flow and the balance of this photo. On top of that, you're left wondering just how high is that waterfall. When you exclude the top of a waterfall from your frame, it adds a bit of mystery to the photo. It makes people go, hmm, I wonder how high that waterfall actually is, and it makes them want to come out and see it for themselves. So if this photo wasn't your favorite, please let me know in the comments section down below which one was and why. Alright, so I just did a vertical shot and I think I actually like that one better than the horizontal shot. So, again we'll see how they turn out later on and I'll show you when I make up the video. But before I wrap up here, I just want to give you a couple of last minute tips. If you're going to shoot waterfalls, particularly on a rainy day, you're going to want to bring some uh, cleaning cloths, at least two or three of these. Get them at Canadian Tire all over the place. 
And the other thing is, I don't know if you can see, but I'm wearing rubber boots. And so at one point, I got a good pair of rubber boots. They're like $125, they're felt lined. And I can actually walk for quite a distance in these boots and be comfortable. So you need something that will enable you to get into the water. And of course, sometimes rubber boots aren't quite high enough, so I usually carry around a pair of uh, Kava sandals so I can get you know waist deep into the water or knee deep at least. And then what I really need to get when the water's really deep, I have a wetsuit. And I wear my cave sandals with that. So pretty much prepared for doing whatever's necessary to get into the water to get those best compositions, those best angles. The other little tip I'll just leave you with is that quite often when you're shooting a scene like this, particularly this waterfall here, you might not be able to feel the mist coming from the waterfall, but there's been quite a few times where I thought there is no mist, didn't feel any wetness getting on my hands or face. Sure enough, I get home and there's just a fine little mist. Do that again. Fine little mist of water that ruins the shot. So I've learned the lesson the hard way a few times. So. Again, you want to have some of these uh, cleaning cloths and whether you think there's spray or not, constantly wipe your lens, or in this case, the polarizer, so that it's free of any water droplets. Like earlier on, I had my umbrella and I didn't notice until I checked the photos that I angled the umbrella so that some water droplets got right on the uh, polarizer. So I had to redo three shots. But better to catch it here than back at home when it's too late. So I'll leave you, leave you with that. Hope you've enjoyed Mary Vine Falls. Again, it's probably my top, one of my top five favorites on Vancouver Island. And I hope you've learned a couple of uh, helpful pointers. And until next time, keep out, get outdoors as often as you can. Breathe in that nice fresh air. Uh, getting out into nature is peaceful and it's good for your health. And what I'm going to be doing in upcoming videos pretty shortly is I'm going to be talking a lot about health and well-being because I've been studying health and well-being a lot longer than photography. So when it comes right down to it, health is, in my opinion, the most important thing that we can have. So I'm going to get a lot more into that, give you tips on health and well-being when I get out about doing these excursions. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. My channel is pretty new. So if you encourage me to keep doing these, I need to know whether you like them or not. If you feel you need to click thumbs down, well, that's fine. But give me a thumbs up if you like the video more than you, if you like more about it than you dislike, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you do, that'll let me know that it's worth my time to keep doing these videos, because I really enjoy doing them, so I hope you do too, so bye for now, until next time. Hello again. So I was going to show you uh, one of the main waterfalls at Suit Potholes, but uh, since the last time I've been here, it's got this big huge fence all around it, so uh, let's see what does it say here. Viewing area closed due to rock slides. Okay, so that's the first I've heard of it. And as of January 18th, 2019. So, let's just take a quick look here. So let's see if I can at least give you guys a quick glimpse. Yeah, not really. Yeah, it's uh, you can kind of see the waterfall down there, but uh, obviously not a good view. And you can walk down this main trail here, but uh, it's not any good for photos, quite frankly. 
and to get any good photos you have to uh, well, let's just check out see if this is a little clearer spot here to get any decent photos from down this trail you have to hop a fence and okay that's a little better so let me uh, make my way down here holy smokes that's a lot of water Ooh, put my hand on a tree with a bunch of sticky sap on it all right so that's one of the that's kind of the boring waterfall the the better waterfall is uh, it looks like it's going to be out of view but two potholes very popular place for the uh, particular the younger crowd to come to during the summer months and over to the right there's a that's where the canyon starts and people will actually go up further and make their way down the canyon all right I guess that's the best I can do for this spot so uh, just thought I'd stop by here and tell the really brief quick story about this spot here um, what you see there is an old chimney and at one point the uh, Ewan family was trying to build a world-class uh, health and wellness resort here and I think it was back in the 90s don't quote me on that but anyways it was a time when um, I guess the economy wasn't that great so they're struggling to raise the money and so construction only got to part way they had some of the wood beams up apparently and they just never finished it so I guess that they uh, for safety reasons they took down the beams and unfortunately what looked like in design at least was going to be a just a gorgeous resort never got finished and this is the remains and inside there beyond the fence there's a, a whole bunch of uh, graffiti well we'll call it we'll call it street art give them the benefit of the doubt um, you know it's it's not bad but anyhow it's uh, got a bunch of graffiti on all this concrete walls in there I just keep looking over at that uh, <laughs> the beautiful mist in the mountains it was the mist never did materialize at the waterfall like I wanted but uh, yeah it was about 200 feet further up the hill so it's close but no cigar so maybe you can see some of the graffiti if I hold the camera up a little bit there so kind of a cool spot but sad story behind it and again perhaps you can see some of the graffiti a little bit better along here all right there's a better view of the canyon the river and just for the record the reason I was able to get here is because not surprisingly the uh, gate was uh, broken down and I actually just walked by two people who were <laughs> inside doing some graffiti so they are active, active and at it. A different view here. Let's see if I can sneak by them without them seeing me. So there's the broken down gate and uh, I guess the lesson behind this is that it doesn't matter how big a, a fence or a wall you build, if people want to get by that fence or that wall, they're going to find a way. That's for you, Mr. Trump. <laughs> but all kidding aside, you know, they've got this big fence here trying to keep people out but it wouldn't be that hard to get by 
people are either gonna cut a hole in it, blow a hole in it, or climb over it, or dig a hole under it. So when people are determined, you're just not going to stop them. You might deter them, but the people who are really determined will find a way. That is my lesson of the day. Last but not least, this is called Pod Creek, and it's just within the boundary of Sioux Potholes Provincial Park. Now, it's not a large waterfall, but uh, in this case, there's lots of nice little cascades that you can use as a foreground. And I was going to uh, come in here with my camera and set up a I've been out in the rain for three hours, so I'm a little tired of the rain. I'm gonna head back to Victoria. But uh, I'll just show you a little bit of a panel here, a beautiful tree, lots of beautiful green moss. And several nice little cascades, like I just said, that you can, you can use in the foreground. More moss and gnarly roots. Give you a little clear shot of the waterfall. So it's a nice spot. Some nice shots can be had here for sure. But not by me today, they're not. Hopefully, this photo from a few years ago will give you a little bit better indication of the potential of this spot. That's officially it. I'm leaving now. Back to Victoria. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. All right, Rockhead, take me home. Sorry, I'm not talking to you. That's 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 the band playing right now. Bob Rock told Dan 20 years ago, Bob Rock James, Canadian producer. Okay.